I'm going to ask the first question. Lars, after 15 years of presenting at the DNSG on the health benefits of nuts, how influential have I been? <laughs> A lot. Influence. Yeah, I shall agree. I feel empowered. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Thank you. Hi. How much difference would it make if you included salted nuts in your, I guess I'm speaking to the, the last speaker because I feel most nuts that are available that people are used to having are salted. And if we've excluded those from the equation, it's not reflective of how much nuts people are eating. In, in my personal opinion, I, I think it would be good, both with salted and unsalted nuts. But I think uh, unsalted nuts is better. Yeah, I'll just add, I think what's often forgotten is that we, have, we tend to have a very high sodium diet or high salt diet, and so salted nuts are going to just increase our sodium level, but they're also very high in potassium, as most plant-based foods are. And so as you increase your amount of plant-based foods in the diet, including nuts, I think your sodium intake could actually increase without effects on blood pressure. Let me add one thing here. Actually, I have the same question, even I didn't almond research for 15 years. <coughs> and one day, I kind of discussed about this, the salt, salty nuts, almonds, and versus raw almonds. And then I heard, actually, the salt in the almonds the, is not very, very high. It's really kind of very slightly salted. So the content of the salt in the nuts will be you know, very small contribution to the diet. Angela Rivellese, Naples, Italy. Uh, one problem with uh, uh, nuts consumption uh, may be that uh, in real life people uh, eat uh, nuts uh, not uh, as a substitute to some other things, so some other foods, but in addition uh, to normal uh, eating patterns. So for what concern uh, uh, intervention studies, uh, there are intervention studies looking at the, the effects of uh, adding nuts and not uh, nuts as a substitute of some other things, and uh, which are the effects on uh, glucose, uh, lipid metabolism, and so on. Uh, okay, if I understood uh, your uh, question is what the difference of uh, when nuts are incorporated into that in an isocaloric way versus when they are uh, as a supplement, okay? Uh, with respect to whatever outcome. That's my question to you. Are you interested in general for no, health? Especially on glucose and the metabolism. Okay. Um, also with weight, because if you have this problem about weight gain. Okay. Uh, nuts have a, a great uh, satiation. And um, as I show in my slides, um, subjects that in a free living uh, situation or, or recommended uh, by the physician or by health authorities eat nuts automatically decrease consumption of other foods. So there is uh, a quick displacement of, of other foods. So the total amount of extra calories is not as much as people may think. That's one aspect. The second aspect, as I mentioned, is that uh, the, not all the energy that is in the food composition tables is actually absorbed. So that makes the situation uh, that we have. Because in free living subjects, I mean, there is no increase in body weight. If anything, there is evidence to the contrary. Uh, the studies that uh, have been done typically in, in controlled clinical trials uh, subjects are fed isocaloric diets, so in which some foods replace others. So there is not the situation that they are uh, in addition. So I'm not aware, maybe somebody here in the table knows of studies that have really tested the effect of having a regular diet plus nuts uh, in addition to and see the effects on, on these parameters. I'm not aware of any study. 
I just wanted to add uh, uh, several uh, studies that I read before. Um, so in terms of free living population, uh, adding uh, whether adding uh, nuts as a snack or uh, including nuts in the uh, uh, overall dietary pattern, I think um, so there are studies showing that uh, nuts have this satiety effect. So even in free living population, uh, you in whatever you way you eat uh, nuts, um, you feel full very quickly. Um, so you uh, reduce uh, calorie intake from other uh, things, uh, possibly ca uh, carbohydrate, uh, those carbohydrate or uh, fat, uh, other uh, saturated fat, fatty acids. So in that sense, I think uh, it probably uh, not uh, of a great concern um, to consume nuts as a snack or include it in a dietary pattern because if nuts really have satiety effect, it, it, it doesn't matter. Was only one comment, one comment in relation to this. Uh, in the meta-analysis that we have conducted and uh, Joan Sabate has presented in relation to clinical trials on we body weight, we have uh, uh, conducted a sensitivity analysis in relation to those studies that nuts are added and those that substitute other foods, no? and in this case, uh, the results are the same. Hi, uh, my name is Erica. I'm coming from Women Health, Women Hands here in Toronto, and I have a question for the panel. Uh, did any of the studies measure um, changes in body composition when you're talking about weight and less risk of uh, increased weight? Also, if there is any association with uh, glucose sensitivity and body composition. I know of some studies that have uh, measured um, central adiposity and uh, waist uh, circumference. And in these studies, uh, as I mentioned, uh, there is a tendency to have a lower um, waist circumference compared with a controlled diet. As far as uh, uh, studies that have used um, adiposity in other parts of the body, I don't remember why I'm not aware. The, the one study we did in Taiwan, with the, the first study we saw about maybe 0.5% uh, reduction in the, the body fat, uh, but second study we did not see that. So it's still kind of uh, inconsistent in this regard. Yeah, Fred Brown's Maastricht University. Uh, I have two points. Uh, if I step in the shoes of the consumer again, uh, I hear that if I eat peanut butter, I excrete only 4% of the fat. If I eat the nuts, I excrete 17% of the fat. That means the more you swallow, the more fat you absorb. On the other hand, we say these nuts are full of good fatty acids. Now, in order to make those available, we should swallow the nuts. Uh, we should, uh, we, we should, we should uh, make them very fine to absorb. So that are two opposite directions that you can move. Now, if I want to be health, healthy, what should I do? Should I keep the, the nuts long in my mouth and, and, and really make them fine and, and uh, to make them bioavailable? Or should I just swallow them to excrete the fat? So, it looks like all the questions come to the center of the table. <laughs> in 1980, uh, there was a very clinical note published in New England that showing that uh, the, uh, the difference between uh, having um, peanut oil, peanut butter, or peanuts. And it showed that uh, the excretion or the intake, I mean, it, it really is according to the physical presentation of, of the food. Um, this is um, an interesting question, and I think it depends on the society and the social group that you are. Uh, I would present the message differently if I would be in, uh, uh, among the one billion people uh, in this world that go uh, to bed hungry. So I'm saying on subjects that have no access to enough energy and enough nutrients, I will highly recommend to either eat the nuts grounded or chew not 40 times, 60 times 
So in order to absorb everything. In Western societies, that uh, 30 to 40 percent of the energy is wasted, I mean, before even going into the mouth, and we are obsessed, I mean, with the total energy intake, it seems appropriate, I mean, to say, and is perceived as positive, I mean, by the society, I'm not saying that it is, that some of the energy that you are actually enjoying, I mean, is not absorbed. So it depends on the marketing message that you want to portray. Okay. Uh, now, sorry. the other point. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh. I also wanted to add, uh, going back to the satiety effect I just talked about. So there are research showing that uh, chewing actually is a trigger uh, for the uh, adip uh, brain adipose that axis. So when you chew, you chew more and uh, uh, send signals to the brain. And the brain will uh, uh, like release all those hormones to reduce your uh, adipose tissue. Or like uh, the, the uh, absorption uh, to uh, store the uh, fat, fat, fats in your body. So uh, speaking from the uh, uh, brain adipose, this axis, the physiological uh, uh, circle, uh, I would uh, recommend chewing uh, so you will uh, uh, trigger this, uh, uh, this mechanism to reduce the uh, intake from other, uh, other uh, uh, less healthy uh, components in the diet. Okay. Now, if you, uh, that was the second point, if you excrete more fat with the nuts, you have more fecal fat. Is there anything known on uh, an effect of the fecal fat content on changing a microbiota and microbiota metabolism? That's a very interesting question. I don't think there is anything published on that, but it's urgently needed, I mean, to see the effects of the microbiota. Uh, as far as uh, not eaters versus non not eaters. Uh, and also a second step would be, I mean, relating that to the uh, chewing uh, aspects of, of that. No, there, I think there are two studies published yes. in the area uh, yes. from the baby bear uh, with the uh, Dr. May in the University of Florida. It's about the almonds and the pistachio. There's some kind of effect, especially from pistachio, there has some effect on the bacteria profile. Okay, in what, in what yeah. direction? And then the, in the one in vitro study in the almonds, they some the, use the in vitro uh, gut model and they see some of the effects on the bacterial profile as well. No, I just want to tell that, I just want to tell that uh, you are right. Uh, there are, I think, two uh, already published uh, articles in this, in this sense. And in, for example, uh, regarding uh, pistachios, I know that the results were in the expected way. If we can say that if we can say expected way talking about microbiota because we really don't know what microbiota is still doing in our intestine. So, uh, but uh, we have, we know some films of microbiota and in this case the studies were, um, as, I, as I said before, in the expected way, meaning that uh, beneficial films were uh, increased in detrimental to the less beneficial. But it's not related with uh, um, fats in fecal samples is related probably with uh, is related with fats or fibers or uh, polyphenols that also are in, in, in the intestine. So it's a mix of uh, effects. Uh, I only one point about polyphenols. Uh, if you eat nuts, especially almonds, eat the whole almonds. Don't eat the silver uh, the one uh, without skin, because most of polyphenols are on the skin. So not they can maturate the, the uh, gut bacteria. Yeah, in some um, conditions, people have felt that um, ingestion of nuts, like peanuts, uh, has an effect on inhibiting um, food intake. You know, somehow, um, it inhibits hunger pains. So uh, does anyone think that um, the reduction in body weight is associated with um, a reduction in food intake when one has taken a nuts like peanut. Uh, just um, I, I, I mentioned before, uh, so there are studies showing that nuts have this satiety effect. Uh, definitely you eat more and you feel full very quickly. So you reduce other uh, uh, calorie intake from other food components. And, um, so uh, in that sense, I think it's possible 
that we, in observational studies, we uh, didn't observe uh, a, 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 a positive association between nut intake and, uh, and obesity uh, and uh, weight gain. Um, it's, it's one of the mechanisms, I think, uh, the uh, satiety effect is definitely uh, possible and probably play an important role in this uh, uh, lack of uh, association between nut intake and obesity, obesity and weight gain. Uh, there are uh, studies uh, doing uh, nuts and uh, uh, other satiety hormones that the brain and, uh, release and adipose tissue release, for example, adiponectin, leptin, and insulin by pancreas, by, uh, in, in secreted by pancreas, and also the uh, uh, satiety hormones released by the brain. Um, so, uh, but then, uh, as far as I know, there's no study uh, specifically uh, looking at the uh, whether this lack of association is mediated by the satiety hormones. But I think it's a very interesting area. And uh, I'm actually thinking of uh, doing a small trial and probably uh, propose to do something just like you said. And I hope that someone will fund me. <laughs> I, I think it's also difficult to isolate a single food. So you're looking, we're talking specifically about nuts here, but if you look, if you consider the earlier presentations today, so it's a vegetarian diet or the Mediterranean diet or a Nordic diet, these are all, the, the main constituents are plant-based whole foods. And so they're gonna be higher in fiber, which as Neil, was, Neil Bernard was talking about, would increase satiation, probably decrease food intake, lead to lower uh, body weights. Uh, and the same with the, the colonic effects. Whole foods, more of that is gonna get into the large bowel what happens with the microbiota is probably very important. It's a bit of a black box, pardon the pun, but it's, it's difficult to know exactly what's going on with the microbiota. But again, whole foods um, are probably going to improve the, the uh, colonic uh, bacteria profile. I think we should probably wrap it up. We're running out of time. Um, I'd like to thank all the, the speakers for some wonderful presentations. Thank the audience for your attention and your questions.